Hey, it's Andrew Huang, and we are once again looking at my top 10 favorite plugins that were released in the past year. Nobody is sponsoring this video, by the way. These are all my own personal picks. I do have a relationship with Plugin Boutique, which is like a site that sells lots of different kinds of plugins, so some affiliate links are in my description. I'm actually gonna start this year with some honorable mentions. The first one is Tomophone. This came out in 2022, but it came out after my video from last year. Honorable mention, not technically a 2023 plugin. This is an instrument that's a really interesting middle ground between a sampler and a synthesizer. Basically what you can do is import a recording of a note or multiple notes from any sound source you want, and it automatically detects what those notes are and maps them to the right keys, but then also extrapolates to fill out the rest of the keyboard range with any notes that you didn't include. <laughs> So this is someone's real voice that has been sampled into these note slots. Each one is a different note, but they're all treated as wavetables. You can assign something like an envelope or velocity to move through the wavetable, like... So this is different from a normal sampled instrument because you're not just playing the sample all the way through, you're like using it as a wavetable, but it's different from a wavetable synthesizer because you're not using the same wavetable for every note. So it just creates a little more expression, a little more realism, but with that kind of otherworldly uh, synthetic feel that sometimes you want to have. <laughs> Honorable mention number two is just everything that Dylan Bastin does. Uh, Dylan is just constantly dropping amazing Max for Live devices. The reason why I'm not putting them in my top 10 and they're just honorable mentions is because they are only uh, Max for Live. They're only usable in Ableton. My two favorites from 2023 are Iridescence, which is a delay that has musical interval pitch shifts to the feedback and you can set up different chords and move through them. So I'm just gonna play one note into it. It's a genius concept. And my other favorite from Dylan uh, this year was Data Train. Data Train? <laughs> Am I Canadian? I didn't even know which way who says what. Now this is just a really fun glitch device. I'll put it on what we were just hearing with the chords. <laughs> And I was just hitting random. It's got a ton of different things that you can control in it, but random is just fun. And honestly, I spent so much money on like collections of other tools, modules, guitar pedals, tons of plugins to try and do this type of thing. And it just does it better in one plugin. <laughs> My last honorable mention, I cannot include in my top 10 because I created it. Transit is a collaboration between me and Baby Audio, so I am including it like this, but I'll do uh, my actual ranked top 10 after I give you a quick demo. If you don't wanna take my word for it though, uh, it has been nominated for a bunch of awards this year. And then, you know, here are some um, legends in my DMs, just uh... So Transit has a ton of different types of effects. You can load up to seven at a time in these slots. Each of their parameters, you can set a start and an end point, and uh, then all of those start and end points are controlled by this big macro knob. So it's amazing for transitions where you're often having to automate lots of stuff at once and hopping between different tracks and plugin windows and all that. But there's also this randomizing feature, including a page where you can set the amount of random that you allow for each parameter. So you can really quickly just find a vibe and it ships with hundreds of different pre-built effects racks. So you can literally just automate this one knob where you want your transition to happen and then try out a bunch of different things and see what you like. You know, is it like filtering into OTT? or a distorted transition, or like spread and delay and a side chain pump. All the stuff that would normally take lots of plugins and lots of time to set up, we put into one interface. All right, so now onto my actual top 10. In the 10th spot, we've got a free plugin, Polyverse Filtron. Most of us watching this video uh, probably know what a filter is. The reason I'm including it is because it has a couple extra nerdy filter features that I don't see too often, especially in the uh, software domain compared to the hardware domain. So let's take a look. Very simple. You've got your cutoff knob, your resonance knob, 
and then a knob that morphs from low pass to band pass to high pass. I always love when they offer that option instead of just selecting between different filter types. There's a drive control, which sounds really good. Let's just throw a sine wave into it. Two things that make this filter stand out to me in the plugin world is that each of these controls has this little thing underneath it where you can set audio rate CV input. I mean, it could be any CV input, but it responds to a CV as fast as audio. Sorry, this section of the video is gonna be so nerdy. So you can route audio into Filtron from another track, not as audio to be filtered, but as audio to modulate these parameters. And you can combine two different modulation sources, which can be positive or negative. And there's also these switches here, which make them stereo and stereo filter Filter modulation is uh, another thing that I don't see as often in plugins as I do in like Eurorack, let's say, where people are just nerds about filters and get more experimental. But what if we route this Tomophone to Filtron? Modulate the filter type. You hear how good it is with that stereo too? Oh my gosh. If you like distortion, you might be interested in this. Wow, we're only at number nine. <laughs> so this is another free plugin. This is a synthesizer called Thump One. It's sort of marketed as a kick drum generator, but it's capable of tons more. So the reason I like this is because, um, They've done something interesting with the interface, which is they really focused it around the envelopes. So almost every parameter has its own envelope already assigned, and you can just click on these arrows to see which one goes to which parameter. So it's a really fun workflow because while they're not surfacing tons of parameters, they're really focusing on ones that'll make a big difference and all these envelopes are already pre-assigned. So you're not like having to think too much about what you are trying to accomplish and then, you know, make your assignment and, and dial in your envelope. Oh, also the envelopes, you can just like freely add points and move stuff around. You're not like dealing with uh, different knobs for ADSR or whatever. Not that that's bad, but this is kind of a cool way to work. All right, and my number eight slot is just a simple utility. It's Silencer from Black Salt Audio. This solves a very specific problem for me very well, which is drum gating. When I'm recording live drums and I want to reduce the bleed in different microphones, uh, up until now I've been using Ableton's stock gate and it's just purely a volume thing. It's like, let the sound through when it's loud enough and you can hold it for a certain amount of time or have the onset be a certain amount of time. But yeah, it's pretty basic. So here's some drums from my song, If I Die Tonight. This is Rob Scallon behind the kit. So let's just look at this kick. As you can see, we've got a bit of bleed from the cymbals and the snare. This is my uh, previous solution. I just put a gate on it. That compared to silencer, it's a perfectly clean kick. So if you're going for this like super tightly controlled drum sound, it's a world of difference between using a normal gate and silencer and they've got a mode for bass drum, a mode for snare top, snare bottom and toms. There's even this ghost note parameter. And so this is something you would just automate on if your drummer is playing something particularly quiet. It adapts the gating for that while ghost is activated. So you're not losing the nuances of the drum performance, but you're also not having to like go into your regular gate, which sounds Sounds worse anyway, and still you can hear all those like cymbals cutting in and out and the snare coming through. And then for quieter played hits, you would have to automate that threshold to the right spot to still catch them. Silencer, major game changer for live drums. 
Number seven, Life by XLN Audio. This plugin just came out a few days ago and immediately upon trying it, I was like, this is going in the top 10. The idea is that you can import any audio up to 15 seconds long. It'll automatically slice it and it'll also automatically sort the sounds and do a little bit of processing on the sounds to get them a little closer to serving the roles of certain types of percussion. I'm gonna record something just to show you. They have uh, an app called the Life Field Recorder. You link the app to your plugin and anything you record into this automatically syncs. I'm going to record some sounds from my book. All right, I hit done. I name it, make your own rules. That's the title of my book. It's coming out February 6th, but you can pre-order it now. AndrewHuang.com slash book. Save. Now, if I go into the app, boom, pops up right there. Now check this out. All those sounds are already a beat. So this is the other side of this plugin is that it will just randomly generate these beats for you. If I hit randomize. It chooses new slices, it puts them in new rhythms, but then you still have total control over what it comes up with if you want. You can program your own rhythms in, you can swap out individual slices, you can control all the usual stuff, volume, panning, envelopes. I've got processes for when I wanna be really precise about sampling and, and creating something in a specific way out of my samples and how I slice them and all that kind of stuff. But um, if you just recorded a bunch of cool sounds and you're like, oh, what could I do with this? Let's play around. This is an amazing plugin. Let's move on though now to my sixth favorite plugin of the year. This is Seven Deadly Snares from Beat Surfing. So this is seven different snare engines and each one gives you a lot of control, but theme of the day, you can randomize. So each engine obviously has its own kind of sound flavor and I'll just randomize each one a bunch for you so you can hear what they can do. But um, yeah, the reason why I like this plugin is because um, there's just something nice about finding a snare that is still the kind of snare that you want, but it's also original. It's not like the same sample that everyone else is using. Also that you can have some things uh, randomized each time you hit them so it can create some dynamics that way. And there's also this morph control so you can get variations of your current sound. Anyway. Let me show you what it sounds like. Here's the first snare engine. So that one's like a really tight, snappy snare. I don't really know how to describe this engine. It feels woody to me a lot of the time. Then we've got kind of a water samples based engine. You got your droplets. Or just kind of like, it sounds like waves that have been sampled, giving sort of clap vibes. The next one though is actually really dark. So just darker, fatter, beefier. The green one is, is very diverse. This gray and yellow one is very drum machine-y. Makes me think of like the classic uh, Roland drum machines. And then the final one is kind of a clappy one, although sometimes it comes up with kind of more metallic, hitting garbage can lids together types of claps. So that's seven deadly snares, just a really great snare plugin. I don't even know, are there other snare plugins? In slot number five, we've got a mastering plugin. This is Master Plan by Music Hack. I'm gonna jump back to uh, my If I Die Tonight song project where I used it on the master chain. This plugin for a lot of my projects has replaced almost my entire mastering chain and in some cases, my entire mastering chain. So it's basically got everything you need to master a track in one plugin. I've been reading about it. I listened to some interviews from uh, the people who made it. They really know their stuff. I think it sounds fantastic and the UI is so, intuitive and, and well thought out. First of all, let's just have some fun. You can really customize how you want it to look and it animates and that's just fun. So you got your usual input and output and then there's different types of uh, compression, EQ, saturation and the plugin actually tells you all about them right on its interface. Thick, enable an additional saturation circuit that you can turn up. Clean, reduces muddiness. There's an optional multi-band compressor if you want. 
The smooth circuit is just like gentle compression. And then calm is uh, more like high end cleanup, reducing harshness. And then you can introduce some tape character. Now I'll give you demonstrations of some of this. Uh, some of it will be very apparent. Some of it is more subtle um, as a lot of mastering stuff is. And then of course, you know, remember you're listening to this on a YouTube video and whatever kind of audio compression they do. <laughs> Big controls though are a, a low and high EQ. Loud, obviously, the big knob um, allows you to pump a lot of gain before it starts breaking up. And then there's a great stereo spreader, which is phase safe. And you can actually test how your master sounds on these different kind of preset EQs that change what you're hearing so it sounds like it's coming from a phone or sounds like it coming from, this is clearly indicating NS10s, but they can't use trademark names. There's a mono check. Oh, and of course, like you've got all your metering right up front here and easy to see. So where I reach for master plan really depends on the project. You know, if I've got something that's simpler or I'm like already super happy with the mix, often master plan, maybe one or two other plugins is fine. If it's a much more complicated project, you know, like very dynamic or has some very specific EQ type of needs, I probably still would use what I have been doing previously, which is like a bunch of universal audio and fab filter stuff, Gulf Oss. However, there are lots of projects where master plan can replace some or all of that because it's just so much quicker and easier to use. Sounds great. And also, you know, with certain of these details, I am not necessarily adjusting anything that significant. Like was the low shelf at 90 Hertz or 80 Hertz? Maybe on some tracks that would make a huge difference. A lot of the times you can just be like, I mean, does it sound good? Or like, can you deal with that in the mix? And I think a lot of us now are doing our own mixing, our own mastering. So I think with a lot more self-production happening and a lot more knowledge about all of these processes just being more freely available, the mastering game is changing. And I think a plugin like Master Plan can be really great for a lot of different people. Number four plugin of the year is Object, and this is actually an instrument within Reason Rack. If you're a Reason user, you can get it, or if you're outside of Reason, you can get the Reason Rack plugin. So Object is like one of the best physical modeling synths I've ever used, maybe the best. So you've got your exciter section, and then three different resonators, kind of modal based one, and then two objects. You see the different kind of models that they have here. And then you can mix between all of these things here, and of course my favorite, there's a randomize. Let's give this a listen. The exciter is at zero velocity, everything is the same level, but if I increase that, you'll start hearing some differences because my sequence here has different velocities. Similarly, I'll adjust the hardness parameter and the velocity to the hardness parameter. And then playing with the frequency and the amount of click in your impact can also have some good effects on the sound. And then I can turn on diffuse and adjust this and make it sound more like a blown sound than a struck sound. All right, let's hit randomize though. So you can dial in the amount of randomization from your starting point, and as you can hear, 
I'm just moving through like string type sounds, bell type sounds, cymbal type sounds. Marimba or vibraphone type sounds respond so well to velocity. You can even um, put an external audio signal into it that it responds to, like kind of with an envelope follower. Very expressive, very fun to play with. My number three and two slots are a tie between two very different synths, and hopefully you understand why. So let's start with Current from Minimal Audio, kind of the big synth of the year, I would say. It offers so much, like just as an example, look at all of the filter types. There are a bunch that I've never seen in a synth before. You've got a dual wavetable engine, you've got a granular engine, you've got a subsection, there are built-in effects. There are a lot of really great presets. I think like the ratio of usable presets is one of the highest I've ever seen on any synth. And then it's also cloud connected for if you want to explore new packs. I think this might be a thing that people do or don't like. Here's what I'll say. I'm used to having to get packs separately off of a website or on like a dedicated installer application. At first I thought like, oh, do I really want a plugin that's gonna want to connect to the internet all the time? And what I'm finding is actually, it's kind of nice for it to be integrated into the plugin instead of me opening up minimal audio pack install browser or whatever, and then having to to install that as a separate thing and then restarting my, I think you get it. I'm cool with a plugin that browses the internet with me. I think they've done a beautiful job with the UI. I mean, it just looks great, but also the layout makes a lot of sense. Uh, I've gone over the kind of sound generator section and the uh, effects and presets. So you got your macros here, filters, and FM AM section, and then nine modulation slots, which are just right in front of you, easy to find, but you can assign them to all the different types of modulation that you would want. Go in and edit them. Oh yeah, this is a cool feature. It'll randomize every time it gets back to the start of the LFO. There are other multi-engine synths out there, you know, pigments, phase plant, those are great too. Maybe if you have those, you might not want this because it's just offering a few extra features and I would say a better layout. Um, but man, it's just such a pleasure to work with. It sounds really good. Like the presets are just so rich and alive to me. <laughs> I don't know if this will be a controversial tie. We're going from a synth that can do just about everything to a synth that does pretty much one very specific thing, but it's a specific thing that I love. So um, I'm tying them. Could not think of which one I liked more. This is random. It's actually also from uh, Beat Surfing, who did the Seven Deadly Snares plugin we looked at earlier. They're crushing it right now. Listen to this. This is a synthesizer with not that many controls, an amazing visualizer, and a very distinct flavor of sound, which is this like aggressive hyper pop and EDM. People who like metallic sounds and crazy sound design. So very simple interface. You've got a few controls that are kind of like macros. They control multiple things under the hood. I saw a comment from the developer that was like responding to someone on YouTube about what exactly these controls do. And they were just like, it's mapped to 34 things. Um, and it's like kind of dynamic and depends on the preset or, or something like that. Then you've also got this XY controller, which controls a bunch of other stuff with the sound. And every time you play a note, this blob does some stuff. Also though, you can select between different types of matter, they call it, I call it blob, different types of blob.
And then lastly, you can randomize. You can set uh, the amount of deviation from your current sound and hit this. The instability control is like every time you hit a new note, how much will it randomize? All right, y'all, number one plugin of the year, uh, which is actually Transit, but I can't say that because I'd be too biased, but it is Transit. <laughs> Synplant 2, oh my gosh, this is a mind-blowing synthesizer. So Synplant 1 has been out for years, like a decade or something like that. And Synplant 2 does the same kind of thing. You've got this seed where as you drag out these branches, it kind of mutates away from your sound, but remains kind of in that same realm. Synplant 2 just levels things up in a totally ridiculous way though, because you've got a lot more control over the individual synth parameters than you did in the previous version. But this screen, Genopatch, is absolutely mind blowing. You can load a sound into it and then using machine learning, it tries to recreate it with its synth parameters. So like, let's drop this sound in. Now we let it generate. And here are its different attempts. I mean, in this case, all of them sound pretty similar and it got pretty close. Now I have a synth sound that's close to a sample that I dropped in and I can use it as a synth. Like I can play it on different keys without the thing that happens with playing samples on different keys of changing the kind of tone of it and obviously the length of it. And of course I can manipulate it in so many more ways. I can adjust every synth parameter here. I could also just like learn about how different sounds work by looking at what Synplant did to create this sound that I liked. And then also there's always the option of using the automatic mutating. So those are my top 10 of the year, but that's just like what I'm into and, and what I was aware of. I definitely might have missed stuff and I would love for you to leave a comment if there was something else that you thought was cool to drop this year. Everything I featured is linked in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.